discussion um, that's on today. I don't know if y'all were um, at the uh, summit or the inequities conferences, but uh, if you were and uh, have, you know, different presences that you want to share with people, all of those, all the sessions were recorded and they're uh, now available on our website. And hopefully everyone, you know, got the online evaluation and had a chance to um, complete that. So we've also been working to uh, um, make sure um, patient-friendly handouts available on the website. So take a look around and make sure you know what um, resources are available. And as always, if you have come across that you think would be good um, for our hospital partners, um, send to us and we'll uh, make everybody aware of those. Um, without uh, yeah, further uh, time, we will get started with our presentation today. I'm pleased to introduce Amanda Morgan, uh, who is the breastfeeding peer counselor specialist for WIC for the state of Oklahoma. And she's a registered dietitian and an IBCLC herself working on her MPH, <laughs> so misery loves company, right, Amanda? <laughs> yes. So, I'll let you uh, go ahead and start and share with us about the uh, what's going on with the peer counseling program. Okay, thank you. I'll go ahead and get started, um, and I'll just provide an overview of the program, a little bit about the curriculum that we use, and then um, I believe there's time at the end for questions, so I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yes, Join the conference. A little history about the OSDH Breastfeeding Peer Counseling Program. It was initiated in Kingfisher, Blaine, Lincoln, and Logan counties in 2004. You can see that it quickly expanded with the help of some uh, peer counseling champions. And as of this week, we are now in 31 clinics. So if you um, located um, Grady County. So I'll be going out this week to do um, a program Nancy presentation Bacon. for them Come join the conference as well. So um, we're excited that we added the county. And this is um, sort of the curriculum that we use. The theme used during the peer counselors and the coordinators is a journey together. And this theme reminds us that breastfeeding is a journey for everyone involved. The counselors are often going through their own journey with breastfeeding as they act as a, a two guide for WIC mothers in their personal breastfeeding journey. The curriculum is designed to utilize evidence-based breastfeeding strategies and innovative teaching methods that encourage interactive learning. There's a variety of activities and videos and case studies that are included throughout the curriculum and that's all targeted towards the adult learner. We have tailored the training to reflect some OSDH specific policies based um, on a USDA Food and Nutrition Service program that was developed in order to implement six full and sustainable peer counseling programs. of what is included in the training. We um, hold the trainings on a quarterly basis. They are four days. And the slide shows the, the different sections in the curriculum and then the modules that are within each section and the topics that we cover. So the peers come with varying degrees of knowledge about breastfeeding, but all of them have their own personal experiences. So throughout the training, we encourage them to share their stories and this allows them the opportunity to hear experiences that may be different from their own. And then we discuss how this relates to the moms that they will be counseling through WIC. By providing the peers with certificates, and it's always really special and exciting for them. Over the course of the training, they own support group, and it's really great to see them supporting and encouraging one another along their breastfeeding journeys or their journeys as parents. model acts as the framework for the peer counseling program. And so the principles included are based on extensive research with multiple WIC agencies in a variety of states. And WIC agencies that have followed this model do experience success with their programs and are more likely to retain peer counselors and see the programs remain strong and viable. So it is based on a model. A little bit about what 
What is peer counselor? So WIC peer counselors are women in the community who have personal breastfeeding experience. We prefer for them to have feeding at least one child for a minimum of six months. Uh, we have hired peers that are successfully breastfeeding the first child who's four months old, and it just sort of varies that the six months is um, line that we set because at six months they'd likely have gotten through um, some of those early hurdles with breastfeeding. WIC finds the peer counselor is a paraprofessional. They are recruited and hired from the target WIC population and available to participants outside of the usual clinic hours. Um, this is a part-time temporary position. It's paid. Uh, we don't have volunteer peer counselors. It is common for it to be a fairly high turnover position because of the design. Um, the peer counselor often works for moms during a certain phase of their lives but the turnover rate isn't necessarily negative. We have peer counselors that go on to become IBCLCs, and we have people that's um, you know, working on going through nursing school, and they just develop a passion for breastfeeding and helping others through peer counseling, and so it's really exciting to see how they advance themselves based on what they learn through peer counseling. Um, even if peers go on to further their careers in areas other than the medical field, they have this knowledge and they're able to um, take their training that they've received as a peer counselor and continue to spread their knowledge and support to breastfeeding moms in whatever area they, they go on to work. And um, we've, we've also had peers that have taken on um, full-time roles within the health department, which is a great asset as well because it just that breastfeeding support throughout the clinic. So peers are trained to provide basic breastfeeding information and support to WIC moms. They help prevent and manage some of the more common concerns, but if moms have help, need help beyond their um, the scope of practice of the peer counselor, the peer will then make referrals to other resources. So the peers often tell the moms that they're a resource hub and that uh, if the moms have any questions, they should contact their peer counselor and they will either help them answer or find them someone that, that can answer, um, help um, their situation. So they, they're a complement to the care provided by WIC staff. They don't replace anything, they just add to it. Mm -hmm. The basic responsibility of peers is to contact the WIC moms at critical intervals during pregnancy, the early days of breastfeeding, and throughout the breastfeeding journey. Um, they do only serve moms that qualify for WIC. So after a year, they stop proactively contacting the moms, but I've heard that moms will still come in and visit the peers when they bring their baby to the WIC clinic and just check in and, you know, brag about the fact that they're still breastfeeding or talk. So um, also help clinic staff with breastfeeding classes. They are there as a resource, and it's a great opportunity for the moms to kind of face to a name for the peer counselor and know that that resource is available. Uh, and then some of our peers have been really successful in establishing support groups in their clinic. So this is top of the typical WIC appointments and the moms will come and meet as a group and, and they talk about different things and um, we had some very successful um, support groups come from counselors. practice of a peer counselor is really simple. Um, they're just supposed to provide basic information, support, and encouragement, um, and make referrals when problems occur that are beyond their training or beyond um, what would be normal breastfeeding experience. They're really there to be a good friend um, to moms and to, to be one that is providing um, correct information. of our nature as humans to seek out people who share our experiences, and I think this is especially true for women who tend to deal with stress by talking about it with someone else. And so research shows that women value the opinion of trusted friends, and counselors fit into this role of a trusted friend, and they also help um, build trust with, with moms and allows them to feel comfortable enough to share their questions and concerns with the peer counselor. Peer 
counselors come from the target population being served, they're in a pivotal position of trust for WIC participants. Um, you know, some hospitals or clinics um, all provide an act to care that assures that uh, health and well being of babies, but the counselor is meant to replace anything but just complement this care as someone who speaks the same language and and relates on a different level to the WIC participants. Um, there are just additional levels of social support, and they um, often have influence on others' feeding decisions. Uh, the increases in breastfeeding rates about six months after a peer counseling program is initiated in a new clinic, and so we do show higher initiation and higher duration rates in counties that have peer counseling. And the peer counselors are still going through their own personal breastfeeding journey, so they're able to show WIC participants what breastfeeding is like in in real life, and they they aren't a celebrity or they aren't uh, someone at a different stage, and so they're they're able to really um, be real with moms about how how this fits into their everyday life, and uh, this is really important for women um, who may have few, if any, positive role models for successful breastfeeding and. The peers are just there to reinforce breastfeeding recommendations in a socially and culturally appropriate context. Clinics do allow the peer counselors to bring their breastfeeding infant to the clinic when they're working, and this is um, this is really fun. It's great to see, and and so this um, the directors are allowed to bring their babies. Varies and is often unique to the peer and her child. Um, usually, the clinics will stipulate that the peers can bring the babies to work until the baby's mobile. Um, we do have a few clinics that allow the baby to continue coming as long as the peer counselor continues to breastfeed. So we have some that are over a year, over two years that are still coming to work. Uh, I do notice that this practice tends to be best when the peer um, is baby wearing. So that. That's something that encourage in training and especially the clinics where they're allowed to bring their baby for a longer period of time. It just it seems to work better when they're wearing baby. Um, and this aspect of being a peer is is beneficial because it helps the peers to meet and or exceed their own personal breastfeeding goals, and at the same time they can. Physically model um, breastfeeding and in baby wearing and in different things. Um, it also makes them a lot more approachable in the clinic, and so I think people are more willing to to talk to them, and, and they can visually see that they are a mom, they have a young a young child, and so it's it's really fun to see the babies often become the uh, the mascots of the clinics. <laughs> The peers are trained to make a connection before providing any educational content to the moms. And uh, this is possible because they do have the time to establish those connections and build the relationships with WIC moms. Uh, these have shown that a woman's ability to initiate and sustain breastfeeding is influenced strongly by the community and her social network of trusted friends. And so this is um, hopefully filling that gap for, for moms. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the peers are available outside of the clinic hours when moms are likely to need help the most. So I mentioned the, the condition before content. And so this is the counseling strategy that we teach to the peer counselors to enforce connection before content. So you'll see there's three steps and that they're um, in order. So the first step is to ask open ended questions, and this is important to building the connection with the mom. And then after those initial open-ended questions, the peers are encouraged to use more being questions that are still open-ended, but help them to identify the true concerns of the mom. And after they have an idea of what the mom is concerned with, they affirm the mom. And this is the most important step and also often most challenging because uh, we want to we want to fix things for the mom or automatically go to education. So during training, we, we put a lot of focus on the affirmation and, and making sure the mom feels that, um, that she's alone and that what she's going through is normal. And that also um, calms her down enough so that when they go to the third step of educating, um, the, the suggestions that the peers will provide. And so um, we 
with education, the peer counselors are instructed to provide simple bits of information that are geared towards each mom's specific concern. So um, they need to keep it simple, um, target her concerns, and reinforce their message, and put mom with some options, and then also we encourage them to share resources um, when they talk to moms for um, uh, a concern. Counselors work to connect with moms during pregnancy, so pregnancy, and so we like them to be able to make those initial contacts when the mom first um, gets fight for WIC during pregnancy, and that's just so that the the relationship can be established by the time the mom delivers. Um, and once breastfeeding is established, the peers will continue to make contacts at least on a monthly basis, um, if not more frequently. assess normal breastfeeding, like I mentioned earlier, and the real goal, um, especially with establishing that relationship early on, is to hopefully prevent any issues that may arise before they become um, major issues. So uh, the pregnancy provides some tips and tricks, and then um, around major milestones, there's more frequent contacts with the peer counselors so that, um, they, you know, for example, that a growth spurt is coming up and they should expect their baby to feed more frequently. And um, the peers recognize when a child is beyond normal breastfeeding and will make appropriate referrals from there. So again, the peers are available to provide education and support beyond the usual WIC clinic settings and hours. Um, and they will keep track of due dates and try to make more frequent contacts in the days and weeks leading up to the due date, as well as the first few days after delivery. And this way, um, the mom should still have some guidance between the time that she leaves the hospital and is able to come into the WIC clinic because the being extra proactive during these times. And um, they're also a great resource when it comes to shooting breast pumps in the WIC clinics, um, they're able to really take the time to explain and review how the breast pump works and work with the moms on um, milk storage, how to assemble, and disassemble, and so this is often a really big selling point for the staff is that they they can um, take on a lot of the burden of, of actually issuing and educating moms on using breast pumps. Terminology that we use in the loving support curriculum because, like the traffic sign, the peers are um, are going to continue to move along with the mom as she gets additional support elsewhere. So this is what we say instead of rural. So if you have the opportunity to work with peer counselors, you may hear them say yield and and their their mean referral, but it's because. Um, when they're yielding to another person, they will continue to follow up with the mom and check in with her, but the, the issue is being um, wholly resolved by someone else. Or, um, if, um, and this is just because the, they're only trained to do the basic information. Um, WIC clinic should have a WIC designated breastfeeding expert who's available to manage ones that are beyond the scope of practice of the peer, and this person is usually the breastfeeding peer counseling coordinator, but there are clinics that have, you know, a few people where the peers know that those are the people they can go to for help or for questions within the clinic. And also refer or yield to other providers questions come up and are not breastfeeding related. For example, um, this might refer to the dietitian if issues come up related to feedings or food practices outside of breastfeeding refer back to primary care physician or um, provider as well if there's something that is more for the mom to go back there. So detail on when peer counselors yield. Anytime you don't feel comfortable with the situation and the situation is outside of the normal breastfeeding experience. And once the yields a mom, she will follow up within 24 hours to make sure that the situation is being resolved another resource doesn't need to be provided. Um, some of the most common situations is that um, the baby's not really settling into the feedings, maybe a, a poor dysfunctional latch. Um, if the mom has questions about medications, this is definitely a situation where the peers will yield to someone else. 
Um, if the mom is breastfeeding more than one baby or wants to breastfeed an adopted baby, that's beyond the scope of practice of the peer. Um, um, also, if the mom isn't following the suggestions provided by the peer, it may benefit from um, interacting with someone that might have some more expertise. Um, and if, if any peer counselors in areas in which you work, it would be great for them to have your contact information um, so that they can refer WIC participants um, when they're encountering any problems. So that the more resources that the peers have available to them, better. I'm, I lost myself. Just a scan. There we go. Um, In-person contacts are ideal, but often the peers are um, connecting with moms over over the phone. Um, we like the peer to see the mom face to face at least once during the pregnancy, and this is why it's really helpful for them to be involved with those breastfeeding classes through WIC because they can see it at least. Um, by multiple people at once that they're the peer and that that's who they'll be getting calls from. Um, then after delivery, um, we want the, the peer to see mom at least once during that first month and then as needed after that, usually whenever they're, they're in the clinic. Um, the peers contact the mom at least every two to three days, um, especially that first week, they're contacting them more frequently. and. Um, to call the peer once she's delivered, but this doesn't always happen, and that's another reason why the will contact the mom a little bit more frequently. After the we'll check in with the mom at least once per week during the first month, and then after the first month, it'll go to a more monthly basis. And um, the peer will call in the clinic when they're eating, and um, they'll stop into the breastfeeding classes. Sometimes they'll hang out in the lobbies and just just be visible and, and um, available to moms. Um, the future goals of the OSDH breastfeeding peer counseling program is to partner with hospitals and um, we would love to have peers be able to visit moms during their hospital stay and um, expect that another goal that we have will be to create a tiered program for peer counseling so they would have a level of advancement within the peer counseling. So, for example, maybe they um, have been a peer for a while and they would have the opportunity to become a senior peer counselor. And um, I think this is just part of the natural growth of this program and things that, that we're looking into for the future. This is the map and I did Grady on here. So this is the most current map of the counties with peer counselors. And on top of you know, what I just mentioned about expand program um, as far as tiered approach, going into different settings, uh, we also want to keep expanding the counties and, and also strengthen um, what we already have. So it's grown a lot and we hope to see it continue, um, continue to grow. Uh, at the beginning, um, I mentioned that I'm going this week to Grady to do a program promotion pre presentation. And this is something that they do either before the program is initiated or right at initiation to gain buy-in from the staff, um, which is really important to the success of the program. And um, it also is an opportunity for um, clinic staff to ask me questions and clear up any misconceptions um, prior to um, the peer counselor starting to work in that clinic. Um, as part of this, uh, the peers often interact really closely with the Children's First or Parent Pro um, staff, uh, which is really helpful in, um, for the peers to help them identify needs from participants that they may not otherwise see. So we, we have a fairly um, strong partnership if, if those programs are available to peers in the clinic. And um, the line of partnerships, community partnerships are really important to the overall success of this program and I know that this is an area that we're continuing to work on um, both these community partnerships as well as strengthening the ones that already exist and uh, breastfeeding peer counseling coordinators who are in a position of um, at local level they work with the peers and um, and guide them and, and uh, kind of su act as supervisors for them and so they're the ones that re will establish um, relationships with the local communities, either um, at the hospitals or um, we have 
they got relationships with the the people in the area and different um, it depends on the county and, and what resources are available so this is part of the role of the coordinators to really um, create um, these partnerships and if you your counselors um, again I would encourage you to um, reach out to the WIC staff if they haven't already reached out to you uh, so that we can continue to promote one another and, and just provide the, the best consistent support possible for moms in our community. And um, I'm really excited about peer counseling. I look to the future of the program and um, happen. I'm excited to see what will happen with it. And um, if, hopefully this has encouraged you if you don't, if you didn't already know about peer counseling and potentially establishing partnerships um, where there aren't or strengthening ones that are already there. And, um, so yeah, that's the program and I'm happy, this is my contact information and I'm happy to answer any questions now. Um, and I, I'm not sure Ingrid is going to do that, but um, that's I have one. Okay. This is Becky. I have um, a comment. The um, uh, you said, yeah, there are um, part-time positions. Do are they eligible for any benefits or anything? No, and that's part of the reason that it's such a high turnover is that they don't receive benefits. Um, they have the benefits of you know bringing their breastfeeding baby to work, which not everyone else has, and so those are kind of things that we build out as far as health benefits. They uh, um, they're eligible for those. Okay. okay. Um, you said they're really like a, each clinic has a WIC um, breastfeeding expert. Yeah. And so who, who usually fills that role? What kind of um, training and credentials do they, what requirements to, to do? Um, I, I think that USDA is sort of strengthening the definition of this role as we speak, but um, for ours, it's usually the dietitian or a nurse or someone that has, um, or a consultant if they're available. Sometimes the coordinators are all consultants, and so um, it just it varies. But usually, it's a nurse or a dietitian, someone that has maybe attended um, the breastfeeding training that's been offered in the past, and um, just has a, a more solid um, knowledge base for that. Um, and uh, usually go to their coordinator first, and then should their coordinator not be available, they would have some people identified within the clinic that would be willing to help. Okay. And you mentioned, that, yeah, that you know, to make referrals. Um, yeah. Do they make referrals uh, mainly um, for in-person visits, or do they, uh, you know, at times um, refer them to the breastfeeding hotline? I'm just curious. Well, I think that usually, um, I I believe that nearly every WIC participant gets information about the breastfeeding hotline. Um, we're working, I, I mentioned that they're available outside of clinic hours, so we're working on, um, they have, we have peers that still have pagers, and that's been a challenge, and so we're working on getting them Appropriate methods of communication, but even then, um, phone call outside of the clinic hours, and it would be like beyond their scope of practice. Then they would um, or yield to the the breastfeeding hotline um, if this is available. But during the day, they probably would refer to someone in person. Which is ideal um, if it's yeah. Yeah, a more complicated problem. Sure. So. Does anybody else um, have a question for Amanda? You mentioned the future goal is. Um, having the peer counselors uh, be able to visit their clients in the hospital. Yeah. So, uh, have, 
any work on that? Is there something, you know, that we can do? Um, what maybe we see is some of the barriers and has that this been in other states? Uh, it's something that we're just very barely starting to work on. And so um, I know that, and I can't remember organization, but in Ottawa County, the peer with the tribal organization does go into the hospitals. And so I um, would like to know more information about up theirs. And I know that, um, that I don't think they've been doing it, but I do know that it's successful and the, the doctors um, do refer to WIC and refer to that, that peer counselor for um, kind of basic breastfeeding support and encouragement. Um, states do it, and what we've heard is that um, the peers go through volunteer training at the hospital so they can get that type of training uh, in, a, in, a, in order to go into the hospitals. And um, I think that's one of the barriers is that the peers have they go in to the hospital, and then um, probably just because they are part time and um, they're limited on that they're available, and so that probably that would be another barrier is just to maintain coverage within the clinic as well as having um, some hospital as well. Um, I can't remember what else you asked. Uh, just anything that we can do to. Um, as a OBRC or, you know, kind of facilitating get one for yeah, the I think that, to look at that. Yeah, great. And I, I think we're just trying to figure out, um, you know, we want it to be in a county that has an established peer counseling program so that the peers are very comfortable in their position as a peer before adding this other of, right. um, for them, and so I think just identifying um, hospitals that would be open to that, and then um, putting them in in a place where the peer counseling program has has been established. Escaped. Um, so tell the what about Oklahoma County? Because uh, there's a hole in the map. <laughs> I, there is a hole in the map. Oh. We are trying, and it's a little bit different because of um, the attendant clinic. So we in the process of going out to bid. I'm not sure the status of the bid, but it, that's that's the problem for Oklahoma County is that it has to, it has to be a bid. And so um, here, I think we said last year that it was going to be that that. Um, as of you know now in March of 2016, <laughs> Oklahoma County, and I think that would be really great and has potential to be a really strong program as well. Uh, just one other, you mentioned um, Ottawa County. I'm pretty sure that um, Cherokee and Tahlequah uh, have their um, WIC peer counselors like Twyla um, and Samia visit in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. So that might be in a group to um to out. Oh, um, um suggesting um Integris Canadian Valley might be a great place to pilot. Um, so um, yeah, they're working on baby friendly as well. So um my other question there. Oh, in the meantime, with the care we have, have we're the existing uh, program. Is something that 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 we might do to help um, maybe increase awareness amongst the hospital staff? You know, the counselors that they can refer the mothers to. Yeah, I mean, I think that that would be good. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, I can um, make that the coordinate. You know, if there's any specific hospitals that are interested in having more information, we can definitely have the local um, 
security coordinators um, go and we have the um, materials, we have some handouts, um, specifically one that's titled Circle of Care, and it just talks about basically consistent care and providing consistent information to the moms, and, and I think that comes through these, these partnerships. So um, I'm sure they would be happy to have anyone that they could yield to or um, refer to for um, guidance. And um, I did hear they do have um, local counseling meetings on, on a regular basis. And I did hear recently that um, down in uh, Cleveland County, they had um, an LC and a social worker from the hospital come to that meeting. So those kind of things are um, are encouraged as well to um, kind of learn more about each other's roles um, with these moms and babies. Yeah, definitely going to help hospitals <coughs> so great idea. that are working on baby friendly with step in and step ten. Um, too, I know it's a challenge for counselors to even find out when mom delivers. Maybe she delivers early and, and when they're not, you know, expecting it and they don't hear from her. Um, so uh, any way to any might facilitate uh, getting, you know, contact with the peer counselor. Um, yeah, that's helpful. Uh, I know that they would appreciate that. And that's kind of why those contacts are, um, you know, they, they don't always know. The mom doesn't always call. And, uh, which is which is fine and understandable, but um, uh, we want the peer to be able to get in contact with the mom as soon as possible. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, hospitals to see be interested in work group to kind of get to see how to maybe smooth out communication. Um, great. Um, call today if you're, yeah, where you can send the chat box or something and phone yourself free, but even having <laughs> two or three results to kind of sort of, you know, tip issues. And but if, if you need your counselors in your community and you've got a, a mom. That still sits on WIC and maybe somehow did get hooked up with one during her pregnancy, wouldn't that be to get that direct connect before she goes home? So the peer knows she's delivered and can be uh, contacting her right away. Um, that would be cool. um, Another thing that that just reminded me of too is um, what thing would be a benefit of the peers being able to go into the hospital is maybe identifying moms that. Um, um, uh, apply for WIC, but maybe did not get certified during pregnancy and um, yeah. helping them get that support as well. Because I think a lot of times, um, I think most time the, the misconception about WIC is that that's where you go to get formula. And so maybe someone that um, was thinking about going to, going to breastfeed um, wouldn't know that these resources are available and wouldn't necessarily get on WIC. So they appear. WIC in general would be another benefit. Food support for the mom who's breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah, yeah, all the resources that are available. So. <coughs> all right. Let's know when uh, Oklahoma County is going <laughs> to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll go out to bid soon, and I think. Uh, as far as I know when that happens, um, so I, I guess, um, and I think it would be anyone on this call, but if there are any um, clicks interested in getting peer counseling or any, if anyone, um, they can notify us at our office and when the bid does go out, I think that there's some way of notifying people when that bid goes out. Yeah, great. Question anybody that's on the uh, on the any from you or do we have any other any announcements? Um, anyone? 
I was talking and my phone was muted. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't have any questions. I don't. I don't know that anyone else has any announcements. Our next our ex next webinar is April twentieth. That's a little bit. We have been doing it the second Wednesday. That's the third Wednesday due to some other scheduling conflicts. So no statistics are due to me by the 15th of every month. Um, development or later stages, and you're keeping keeping. That. That's really all I have. Speaker for that one is Ann, and I don't think she's given us a topic. But just so a good webinar. Well, um, yeah, I don't have any other announcements right now that. Um, we will then let everyone go a little bit early. Enjoy yeah, the rest of the uh, day. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> I have something to, to add. All presentations from the, the conferences, they're, they've all been uploaded to our website along with the PowerPoint slides if um, if the speaker made the slides available to us. So if you all have any docs or anybody who wasn't able to attend, uh, have them go online and watch all of those.